Shalom and welcome to another episode in our ongoing series called Faith Journeys with God in the Land. Today we're going to follow in the footsteps of Jesus here along the shoreline of the Sea of Galilee. You know, people ask me what my favorite location is in Israel. Well, this is probably one of them because of the beauty of the Sea of Galilee. It's actually a freshwater lake and it's about 13 miles in length and seven or so at its widest point. I'm walking here at Nop Ginnisar out beyond the water's edge and I'm enjoying a beautiful afternoon. It's about 5.30 in the afternoon, our day just finished and I thought I would do yet another walk here along the Sea of Galilee. Now perhaps you've seen other episodes of me talking about this lake. It's called the Kinneret in Hebrew, but uh, it's a fantastic afternoon and I thought I'd, I'd do yet another one in case you missed the previous episodes. Now the Sea of Galilee was indeed the area of Jesus' primary ministry. In Capernaum, just to the north of where I am, was where he sort of made his home base, quote unquote. And we can read all about his activity, his ministry, his healing, his teaching there in passages like Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 9, Luke 7, John 6, and a few others perhaps as well. But as you can see, this is a beautiful lake and it's a freshwater lake, and I'm heading in that direction to the end of this walkway where we'll be able to see in all directions. This lake level is actually the highest it's been since about 1992. It's been this high for a few years now. So it's good to see all the water and the even uh, the people across the way, as you see the boats that are taking tourists on really what is a fun experience. We'll be doing that in two days. We'll board our boat and we'll spin out there a little and enjoy talking about the storm narratives that involve Jesus. Now we read those storm stories in passages like Mark 4, where Jesus actually is in the boat with his disciples, a much smaller boat that, that, that you see here, but Jesus calms the storm. Peace be still, he says. And then the Matthew 14 passage is the one where we have this guy named Peter who walks on the very water here of the Sea of Galilee. And that story is quite amazing as well. Peter was the only guy to get out of the boat, which is uh, maybe not surprising. He was bold in what he did. Sometimes you come down hard on Peter, but let's face it, uh, he was the only one who acted initially, and of course he took his eyes off of Jesus and slipped underneath the water until Jesus rescued him. But can you picture that happening right behind me? This lake is really a beautiful lake. I think it's the most beautiful area in Israel, this northern part. Now, when I spin around uh, the view here for you, there's Tiberias coming into view. About right there. And Tiberias is the biggest city here along the western shoreline of the Sea of Galilee. There's the cliffs of Arbel. We'll be hiking them. We always do on all of our trips. Uh, our bell, that cliff there, is not mentioned specifically in the Bible, but who knows, maybe on the slopes of this mountain is where the Sermon on the Mount took place, or uh, certainly, as we read in Matthew 28, Jesus met his disciples after the resurrection on a mountain, and this is where he offers the Great Commission, if you recall that passage. Uh, I think it, it's probably the the mountain called our bell today but a beautiful perspective of this lake here on the west side in fact uh, just 
behind me, uh, just in a moment as I spin around, there's those boats again. In 1986, they actually found a first century boat that was sort of stuck in the mud. The water level was really low, and behold, they found a boat that dates to the time of Jesus right there behind me, just another 50 yards or so out, as I understand it. Uh, there they floated the boat out. They put it in styrofoam, and they preserved it over a good 10, 12 years, and now it's displayed in the museum right here where I'm at. So we're looking to the eastern side, the other side, as we say, and as it's recorded in in Mam, uh, excuse me, Mark four and five. Jesus ends up going to the other side, and he befriends a demoniac and exercises those demons from him and the boar or the pigs go running down the cliff. And that's again on the other side, probably a little on the southeast side of the lake, maybe in that area right there. All these stories that pertain to the life and ministry of Jesus. I'll tell you, when you come to Israel, uh, you read the Gospels in a whole different way, especially the life and ministry of Jesus as we actually can walk in his footsteps and hear his teaching and see where he healed people. We were just in Capernaum, where in the synagogue that's below the present one today, the one that does date to the time of Jesus. All of these areas, all of these cities that are mentioned, even uh, to the north, Chorazim and Beit Saida. In fact, we're looking north now. Beyond uh, those boats is the home of Peter, Andrew, and Philip, according to John 1. So you can't miss seeing Jesus here, here in the Galilee, because we can read the text and literally pinpoint where all of these stories happened. So Jesus was an integral part in training up his disciples. He called them, 12 of them. Every rabbi would call followers, of course, and Jesus chose, get this, a couple fishermen, Peter and Andrew, a few more fishermen, James and John, a tax collector, Matthew or Levi, and uh, others, of course, 12 in total. One would betray him, but uh, 11 were faithful in continuing the kingdom ministry that Jesus implanted within them. So how does this all relate to our faith walk with God in the land? Well, when we retrace the footsteps of Jesus, we really have to pause to see him, hear him, watch him, do all that he did to the sick, the lame, the blind, to those who were desperate for hope. And yet when we look at all the people to whom he ministered, all the people he showed compassion to, friends, don't ever forget that he does all of that for us as well. He is our Lord and Savior. He cares for you and me when we're in need. He comes to our aid. He encourages us. He fills our walk of faith with hope, with perspective. Even when the storms of life come around. You know, today is a fairly windy day. And sometimes we're here when the storms do come out of nowhere. For instance, because of the level of the lake being about 700 feet below sea level, and uh, the currents that come through the Arbel Cliffs, the Valley of the Doves it's called, and uh, just because of the level of the lake and the wind circulation above the lake, you know, storms can happen all the time without notice. So even in our walk of faith, just like the disciples of Jesus experienced, uh, we too, as you well know, maybe you're going through a storm right now, and you're wondering if Jesus cares for you. You're wondering if he's in the boat with you, walking side by side, or, you know, sometimes we say, Jesus, don't you care? That's what the disciples said somewhere out there as the boat was spinning around in the waves and the wind in the middle of the lake. So as we can be 
recall all of these stories from the Gospels, don't ever forget that Jesus cares for you and he's there for you and he's there to offer a hand of encouragement to you. So we celebrate the life and ministry of Jesus here in the Sea of Galilee. I hope you're encouraged too today and until next time, Shalom.